your life. Okay, I am. Hello, 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 everybody. Hello, everybody. How are you doing? Welcome here. All right, just checking. Yes, we are live. We are live. And this episode, I'm going to try something new. You tell me if you like it or not. I want to try a, a sort of a discussion debate just for the beginning. So like the first 30 minutes, maybe, I don't know how long you, you can entertain me with this. Um, we're gonna have a look at some discussions on the art world. There's lots of crazy stuff out there that I think are interesting points to debate for artists. You, kind of, you don't necessarily need to have an opinion, but I think most artists have a pretty strong opinion on these and it's going to be fun to talk about that. And, and so it's going to be kind of a, a fight of ideas. And that's, that's what we are going to do. So it's going to be fun. So after that, we are going to do a recording. And I'm going to record a little bit of a, a demonstration for a painting tutorial that I'm going to make for this channel. So hang on to your, um, hang on, attach your bells, attach your seat bells, and we're going to take off in a, in a couple minutes. So let me first say hello to everybody. Turn this hyper, hyper hyped music off. Ah, and get some normal music. And uh, hello, everybody. Hello, Balsam, Manic Angel, Socrates, Luis, Felicia, uh, Attila, and Dawn. Greetings from Washington State, USA. Greetings, everybody. Okay. Just checking if there's music or not. It's very quiet, that's all. Hey, uh, thanks for your content. Thank you for uh, thank you for watching. Hello from New Zealand. Listen and watch your content while painting in my studio. Thank you for it all. Well, that's the spirit. So please keep doing that. That's exactly the point of um, of these streams that we do is to make um it's to make it a, an enjoyable experience to do while you make your own art okay music's very low at the moment so i don't know what is wrong mm, okay maybe i just raised all right so uh, <laughs> okay, uh, what's the menu for today? I'm hungry. Absolutely, we're gonna jump right into it. So, this new concept that I have is called Convince Me Otherwise. So, we're gonna have a look at something and as mentioned in the title of the video, my point is, and you say, like, if, if you're if your opinion differs, just let me know. But my point is, if art needs to be explained, then it's not worth watching. No, it's not worth looking at, right? Visual arts. I don't mean that it's not art. I mean, it's, it's not art that that's worth actually looking at because it can just be purely explained and that's all. And we're going to see an example with an artist that I love really, uh, that I love really, um, I, I, love, I love hating. I'm sorry, I don't have any other words. And this is this guy. So hold on and let's do this. Convince me otherwise. This is side Wombly. And this is real. Everyone, this is real. What you're looking at here. It's an actual price tag right above my head. Oh yes. 46 million US dollars. So I'm not 
You do whatever you want with your money. If I had 46 million, I would probably not spend them on that. However, you'll you'll probably say, well, that's a money tactic and this and this is tax evasion. This is kind of okay, okay, okay. I get it. I get it. I I totally agree. Let's not take this point into our equation here. Let's talk about how much art talk is needed to make this art feel like it's worth looking at. And actually we're looking at it. But how much explanation has been involved to make this feel like wonderful art? We're gonna have a look. This is a Christie's actually. This is the actual website where it was sold. This is Christie's. So this is legit. Look at this, Christie's. And we're gonna go down and well, you have everything you need for if you want to purchase this, obviously. Um, I'm sure you all have the money and you're all interested in getting some of this. What really matters is what's below. It's like, so you have the literature, two books, and then you have this, <laughs> an essay with a, a poem by Bob Dylan that I, I paint to see the connection. And, oh, look at that. Also, these are just five lines to explain the work, right? No, 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 read more. Look at this. Look at how much explaining <laughs> is needed. All right, I'm gonna spare you the, I'm gonna let you just pause and read if you want. I'm gonna spare it to you live. I'm not gonna read that out loud, but a very pompous, very self, self um, sufficient in a way, self attracted talk towering over the viewers and enveloping them in a tumultuous spiraling web of flesh and blood cutted from that seems to simultaneously climb and fall across the surface of the canvas entitled 205, 2005 is one of Cy Twombly's last greatest works it was executed well however was executed not not really tough to execute so I'm gonna skip this part um, okay so this is more a, a description um, the, it was done at the age of 75 and then you have this huge essay explaining everything. And I've, I've read it. Uh, and it's a lot of talk that doesn't, I don't, I don't get the connection to, to the painting. The, the, the talk is just as abstract as the painting. I've read it all. I don't know. Is this me? Do you feel the connection? All right. So yeah. Um, all right. So money laundering. Yeah. Obviously, we all know like the the famous tactic. I just want to just go over this and fly over this, and maybe we'll have a, a special episode dedicated to talking about that, like the 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 fact that you can buy the painting. So then just explaining very quickly because it, this was brought up by Cloudface. Um, so very quickly, the money laundering trick is that if you're super wealthy, um, you don't want to declare all your actual money on your bank account because they're going to tax it. So what you do is you buy a work of art that's super expensive, right? So once it's bought, you have to pay taxes on it, but you can also um, give it away to an art institution. And this will be 
written off your taxes apparently so it has different different way to work in, dif in different countries of course but it means and, and you can also keep it in a and you can avoid taxes first when you buy it by directly or not even taking it off from the free port of Geneva so you, you keep it there in a, in a sort of a vault where they keep it in good condition so you avoid all taxes and after that if you want to make the state f think that you're poorer than you are you can if you sort of give it away so in their like uh, in the books it feels like you just gave away 46 million and and this is written off your taxes but actually you can also like I don't know. I don't know how it. it I'm not not going to describe everything, but it's it's a very smart, clever tactic of of avoiding to just um, avoiding to pay tax taxes by like using the fact that art has no set value. You can't compare a piece of art uh, to another one and say, okay, so this should be ten dollars because it's. This other painting is 10. No, this one is 46 million and this one is 10. So there's no set uh, common ground where you can value all works of art. So they use that to play with prices and playing with prices, they can play with their millions by avoiding, like by very smartly avoiding uh, the, the, the place that um, you don't want your money to go to. Uh, let's just, uh, I didn't the chat here sorry you weren't there i was alone <laughs> this is an insult to artists in my opinion um all right so well okay so let's not dive today like because there's more interesting documentation that will explain this more clearly than i can do um and i'm not clear on the tax thing it's like nobody's clear which is why they do it like what i want to to talk is this like look at this this art talk because this is also part of the tactic some very serious guys academics you know like they they sort of make these complicated texts to make it seem more important than it is madness passion ecstasy ecstasy rising and falling are all therefore the core qualities of these works which in the physicality of scale and and scale of their presence reflect a similar sense of vigor and expended energy taken on the part of the artist in the making of them what a sentence you know sometimes as an artist even like a low level artist like me because i'm not pretending to be better at it like at all but as a low-level artist you still have to you know describe your work for your website for when you whenever you take part of a show and every time I write a sentence like that I say to myself no this doesn't mean anything it means nothing it's like pure word like word salad doesn't mean anything the basic looping motif of these work, like the theme of Bacchus, is a recurring theme in Twombly's art. Also, well, this is the history of apparently this is a theme. Uh, okay, so Leonardo's deluge drawings and Twombly's work to become uh, <laughs> to paint. Twombly noted, involves a certain crisis or at least a crucial moment of sensation or release and by crisis it should be by no means limited to a morbid state but could just as well be one ecstatic impulse. This is very difficult to describe but this is an involvement in essent, no matter how private, into a synthesis of feeling, intellect, etc occurring without separation in the impulse of action uh-huh so you need to be motivated to paint crucial moment of sensation so you need to be inspired is that it then that's how we say it don't don't make it seem like more complicated than it has to be you have to be in the right mood right 
to paint. That's that's all. It's very difficult to describe. Yeah, being in the right mood, it's it's tough. Having the 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 right feeling that you're gonna be painting with the right mindset today, that's tough. It's a synthesis of feeling, intellect. Yeah, you have to think about it. You have to feel it. <laughs> All right. So let me see what you guys say. Okay, right. price and artistic value are two different things. Yeah, sure. No, not talking about it. Like this can take us in so many different directions. I just want to talk about art talk. Uh, have to see some of the walking tattoos out there. Whoa. Uh, I think this is being done just for shock value. Probably, yeah. It can be. Can be. Uh, okay, so Damien says it again. So the price has more to do with people investing than the actual value of the painting. Uh... I would prefer it in Prussian blue. Oh yes, there's tons of them. We'll, we'll see more of, of this guy. I've never been a fan of abstract scribbles and when someone tries to explain it to me, it proves my initial visceral reaction. Exactly, so that's what I wanted to start with. It's like, look at this. This is an entire, this is a different website where it explains it all. Like, sightwombly a spontaneous painterly poet. Okay. Good. Um, Saitombly produces symbolic masterpieces with spontaneous scrolls. Okay. And this is all an explanation of his work. But the more I see it, and exactly like you said, Joe, it the more it reinforces the, the fact that, okay, so... It's not that I don't get it, because that's often the defense that these guys have, the defenders of these this type of art. They say, all right, it's just like, you shouldn't judge too quickly. You just don't get it. You need to be educated in a certain way to understand the, 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 the intentions of the artist and what this work means and what it was, why it was done, how it was done. You're just not educated enough, so you should hold on to your judgment and let others decide. Those who chose to put this in a in a high high level museum, you should let them decide for you that it's important. Just believe us, right? You're not educated enough. Well, in my case, it's not that I'm not educated enough. I've studied this stuff. I've been to art history. I've studied contemporary, modern. I get it. It's just, it's still not worth my time. And I'm not saying that's one thing here. We're never saying, if you want to be a part of this channel of what we do here, please never do, never say, well, this is not art. Well, it is. Who cares, right? What we want to say is, this is not interesting art. This is not good art. This is just, yeah, okay. You want to call it art, fine. You want to put that in a museum, fine. I'm not gonna be the one preventing you from doing that. I'm never going to stop anybody from making any type of art. So this is legitimate art and I'm glad that it exists. However, it's not just because it's art doesn't mean I can criticize it and I'm going to criticize the hell out of it because I th I think it's vacuous. I think it proves nothing and I think it's been done once. So let's move on to the next thing, right? Because they're still doing the same stuff. I don't know. Like I want to defy, defend my own vision and I defend it by doing my own art. So I should take talk less, but I mean, this is a talk show, right? I have to talk. I have to be there and talk. Now, I, I like to, to just put these ideas into words because most of the time I don't think about that. I make my art. It's my way of sort of rejecting this. It's the best way. The best way to reject this type of art is to make your own art. But you also want to just sometimes clear your mind of, of these ideas. So the thing is, when they say to you, 
yeah, you just don't get it. You're not just educated enough. Well, you can read. Well, I, I, I just encourage you, just read this all. You'll probably get it. Even though most of it doesn't make sense, there's not, not much to get. And once you get it, it's still not interesting. Like, I get it. It's, it's just that I don't care. I don't care about these scribbles. Maybe the first one who, maybe an artist who first wants to make this type of gesture, the very first one as sort of a joke uh, to mock the snobism of the art world, and maybe the artist wants to do that, fine, I'll laugh with it and I'll, I'll, I'll say, hey, good one. But they are taking themselves way more seriously than that. So this is the entire explanation, Sight Wombly. I'll let you read it so you can see, you can just pause and uh, I'll, well, you'll see that Sight Wombly spent his formative years slingshotting between education institutions. So formal art training and um, well, stud study at the Art Student League where he met Robert Rauschenberg. So there's a lot of connections with Rauschenbergs, also with Pollock. So this is his first uh, solo work. That's great. That's drawings. Okay. Uh, more drawings. You let me know what you think. Okay, Damien. I'm not into abstract painting, but I like the intention of it. It's an expression of a moment. I personally don't click with it, but maybe some people might. Yeah, I, I'm sure some people might. Abstraction, I have nothing against abstraction. But really this. <laughs> it's just plain ugly. Like, I have nothing against abstraction in, like, hotels and stuff like that. Because I would be, like, I wouldn't be very happy that a, a nice landscape is, let's say, in the corner of a hotel or in the hall where it's not ideal to look at it. But an abstract stuff like that, if it matches the curtain, why not? Like, I wouldn't mind. I wouldn't mind stepping on it. I wouldn't mind sitting on it. I wouldn't mind eating on it if it was the decoration for the table because it looks nasty, but um, maybe decorate toilets? I don't know. Uh, but that's probably not why it's used. It's probably decorating a, a you know, a, a multi million dollar loft somewhere. All right, so this is explaining this all like crayon chalks. The beginning of Twombly's run on handwriting, his now signature scrolls. Around this time, the artist concurrently worked on a series of sand sculpture. So, well, he also did sculpture. Look at it. Glorious. Sight Wombly sculpture? Yes. This is, this is very, very evocative. Look at that. So the guy is making this type of art for others. Ah, sorry. Move. Sorry, I have this menu. Ah, move. So this guy is making this f to sell to others, but this is what he buys for himself. Ah, interesting. Interesting. 
Look at this one, two, three, four reproductions of high quality antique sculptures and one of his painting in the background actually like looks like kids that have been very very naughty like drawing on the walls but it's actually an original work of art it's worth millions and these well there's a couple hundred at a flea market yeah you know they are plaster reproductions to be to be fair i think or reproductions at least this one feels like plaster so couple hundreds and this couple millions right see the see the difference this this is glorious and this this is particularly ugly Flowers, okay. <sighs> really? And I encourage you to really, if you're watching this after the... Uh, if you're watching the replay, just pause and just read all of this. I've read it. His sculptures present themselves as fragments, ruins, but of what original whole? There isn't one. They are uncanny objects, as playful as they are grave. For what? For that? This is plain ugliness, really. Look at this. Kind of the two worst cutters to put together at high, like, <laughs> I don't know. All right, so, um, please let, let me, I'm, I'm going to read a bit of, about what you're saying just to see if there is somebody who kind of goes against my opinion, because that's the point. I welcome contradiction. I was looking for that. Um, uh... Okay, okay, just just looking for somebody to just uh, contradict me a bit. Or you can play devil's advocate if you want, because really... I I'm sure we all align on many subjects. Uh... Alright, I swear yesterday afternoon I doodled something a thousand times better and also had many thoughts behind it, a feeling... It's also not going to be worth anything to anybody, not even me. <laughs> well, that's the point of like value and how arbitrary it can be. Um, all right, I don't. I'm not following you, a because there is a long. Okay, okay, a, it's a long, long um, sort of uh, demonstration. I'm, I'm just... This obsession with what people like or not is a madhouse thing. What matters is what is beautiful. Well, beautiful has been erased from the, the conversation for, for a while, like more than a century, I think. Okay, okay. I'm trying to follow because there's tons of nice arguments. I'm trying to keep up with uh, with what you what you say. A lot of this art seems more like decor than anything else. What what do you mean? Would you decor? Would you decorate your house with that? I would like if I saw that. I would put it in the trash. Like if you, let's say, let's do something. 
well, maybe you can judge the the actual objective. Like, it's very hard to know the objective value of a work of art. Okay, okay, okay. It's noted. Saying that art is subjective, I object to that. But it's also very hard and impossible to uh, f get the objective value of a work of art. What is the objective value? There is none. But is it art, art that's worth uh, looking at? You can know that, you can do that, you can check by doing a very simple experiment. Put that in the street next to a garbage bin. If someone picks it up and saves it, it's probably art that's worth looking at. If nobody picks it up, if the if the the, the garbage people they, they 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 think that it's actual garbage, maybe it's it's not good art. Like put this in the middle of the trash and somebody will pick it up and save it to preserve it, right? Put this like this, this this bust here, this one, this one, this one. Put this in the middle of the street with trash around, and somebody will say, "Hey, well, they're crazy. They're throwing that. No way." They'll pick it up, save it, try to sell it, probably, so they know that it has value. Now, put that in the trash and people will say oh okay so kindergarten had to go and they're just throwing it away uh, worth nothing <laughs> christopher says kind of the the has the kind of the, the the opposite way of thinking zoom into a street wall find a spot in some slum area you'll have material for abstract like zoom in find a texture out of nowhere and you have basically the same kind of you know abstract uh, maybe not this maybe like this like like a butcher butcher table i don't know all right look at this again his um rome apartment funny that this guy likes to be in rome where there's all this classical art that apparently he's so, so much better than classical art that he has to do something that has nothing to do, but he still likes to be around it, right? I think this guy hates his own kind of art. And I, I would hate it. I would hate it if I had this on my walls. I wouldn't live with myself with that. It's probably worth several millions, mind you, but I would have a very hard time. Ah, <sighs> Twombly's uh, uh, no, later reputation. So this is again circles. His legacy, so this is his studio. So let, let's see his legacy. Siphon Bleak continues to break headlines posthumously with a deep dive into his contested sexuality scandals regarding a supposed assistant. Okay, so I didn't know that. Well, um, I, I don't know what it is. Uh, record sale numbers, uh, nuanced emotion unite his mixed media work through high and low brow material alike, even as his chameleon complexities advanced within his deeply intimate category, however, like a keener reflection on an evolving society who consumed, shaped, and diminished it. By synthesizing poignant linguistic puzzle in puzzles into accessible imagery for viewers to dissect, Twombly converted his own internal imbalances into digestible tidbits of humanity, everlasting vestiges of his mighty presence. What a sentence. Oof. <laughs> 
do, do you think they use Grammarly? Grammarly helps you be more synthetic. Don't say bullshit. Go to the point. <sighs> okay. So, let's now... So, back to my initial idea. If art needs to be explained, then it's not worth looking at. Because, first of all, one of the main things is not explaining it. One of the best things about good art, in my opinion, and this is where it might become controversial, is good art doesn't need to be explained and like you can enjoy it without knowing what it means without knowing what it is like um let's say let's take flora by botticelli ah Primavera, sorry, I, I wanted to say Flora, but let's take this one. Okay. Alright. If you take this, you might not be a fan of the style, you might not really like it, but you can appreciate it for what it is without knowing the story, without knowing what these ladies are, and you can appreciate, let's say, a beautiful face. You can appreciate um, a gaze, a certain delicacy in the hands, or maybe you're not a fan of Botticelli. You're not. This is not your type of art, but you might like the details, the flowers. There is something, even if you don't like this type of art, there is something redeemable that you'll find and you'll appreciate something without the need for any explanation whatsoever. And maybe the fact that there is no explanation in this art is, is the best thing for this art. Like it's self-sufficient. But now this, if I'm not explaining it to you, you'll probably never really find find it worth your time now if i put it in a, in a prestigious white box white cube and i put a lot of spotlight on it and i'll i'll make a lot of people work on explaining why it's so wonderful maybe you'll consider it and say oh, okay maybe i changed my mind this is a um this is a what tragic narrative of love and death um okay okay maybe but here you can go without any type of explanation and still enjoy it still appreciate the the painting demo that we're gonna do in a couple of uh, minutes when we switch to the second part is this look at this this is a beautiful sculpture I don't know exactly, and you know, I don't think Egyptologues are very exactly clear on what it was meant for, or I think they are, but I don't know. I'm not, I'm not um, into Egyptian art, but the this sculpture, the shape, the simplification of the shape, it works, it clicks. I see the essence of a cat. I, I I see an immortal image of an idealized cat. It's gorgeous. Even though I don't have the religious connection to the sacred animal that the Egyptians had, I'm not using it as the Egyptian ad used it. I'm not seeing it the same way, but I can still feel, and I'm. I find this interesting. I don't. I like looking at it. And if you want to explain it to me, fine. I'll be glad. I'm not saying art should never be explained. I say 
it should be explained in a second time. So first you should enjoy it for what it is, and then the explanation comes. That's what I'm saying. With this one, there is no first-hand enjoyment. You have to be explained first, and you enjoy later. With this, and with this, you can enjoy it first, and if no explanation comes, you still have, it still has improved something in your quality of life. It has raised your spirit to a, a level of, um, like, you feel connected to beauty, to harmony, to, to the theme that's represented, to the story that's depicted, to the animal that it's, that's represented. There is beauty in it and you can it's an enjoyable experience. Just like when you know when you when you have the, the when you are in the presence of truth and there's something soothing about it, like when you're in the presence of friendship, of love, it's like a, a it's like a, a great feeling, like being in the presence of beauty. And this is worth it in itself. And the explanation is a nice bonus, it's an extra. With this, the explanation is a, need, is a requirement. You need an explanation before you can find this beautiful. Otherwise, it's just very ugly. And it's just not, art is not just about beautiful because you can still make you can still make ugliness the subject. You can still make, um, let's say, let's take this one. Uh, hold on, I'm gonna try to put an example of beauty not being the main theme. Look at this one. Caravaggio, Judith beheading Olfrens. Like, beauty is not the subject here. Well, maybe she is beautiful, but she's ugly. And she's probably one of the best characters. And she's very ugly. Well, she's an old lady, but look at how she's painted. The subject is not beauty here. But you still have something redeeming this violence is sublimated by this by the, the talent of the painter and this sheer violence is it's hard to watch but the the artistic experience makes it makes it worth worthwhile you might not know about the story. Does it matter? Does it matter who did this? Not really. Put this in the trash. I I dare you. Well, if you can take it from, from the Italian museum, they're probably going to be mad. But put this in the trash in the streets and see what happens. But put this in the trash in the streets, and I'm afraid, like, maybe that, maybe some, some, like, a, maybe a, 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 maybe a worried mom will say, hey, some kid lost his drawing, I'm gonna bring them back and maybe find parents around, see if the, their kids drop their sheet of paper. That's about it. Like this, I don't know. Well, maybe now people know that it's... People know that art looks like that now, so probably they'll save it. But... Right. So that's it. Um, Alright. 
So let's see, let's see what you, I've been, you've been running in the background and I haven't read a lot. Uh, otherwise you'd look at it and okay, I'm, I'm really far. Uh, put a caravan during the trash blasphemy. Well, I, I still think you can do that. Because I still think that you can. Um, you, you can. I mean, I wouldn't worry too much. It would be picked up pretty soon, pretty fast. So I wouldn't worry. Just make sure it's not raining that day. But I mean, uh, what do you guys think of the Eche Omo? <laughs> oh yeah, we have to do that. Uh, the the Spain restoration. We'll have to talk about that at some other point. It was super funny, but like the church has actually, um, uh, the church has actually um, has actually gained popularity <laughs> since then. Uh, what is this? Uh, Okay, so this is the this is the the, the Eche Omo that uh, that Damien was talking about. <laughs> oh yeah, well we can pay like like this would take us to a whole different. Um, to a whole different uh, subject. So I'm not going to touch on that, but I have no problem talking about provocation in art and the shock value of art. Um, pictures of uh, like blasphemy, blasphemy pictures like that. Um, like we can talk, this is a touchy subject. I don't mind. Like if you are interested in this type of, debate formats but this can go really incendiary because i'm against all form of of blasphemy so i'm i'm always going to be on the side of whoever makes art even like except this lady here i would have said stop <laughs> but um this twombly guy i would never oppose to him making whatever he wants i don't care it's just that i don't care in the end i don't care Prove me that it's good art. I still don't care. I don't care about that. I don't care about that. But I would die for this guy's right to keep making his art. I'm never going to be on the side of this type of art should be outlawed and this type of art should be outlawed. Not this. Not art that's that's uh, mocking any type of god or any type of anything like i'm always on the side of not um of freedom of expression always and freedom of creation of course goes with it so but i'm i'm for opposing views that's what i want to what i want to do uh memes are more more popular now sure that's the new form of sort of joke slash <laughs> art in a way it's very it's a, like memes probably will change the course of how art is created with more a meme culture in in the future um ah nice you you caught me if you really don't care we wouldn't be talking about it well i care because it's in I care because it's um, like it's all over the news. Like this is there was a, a an article in my this is this is why I got this the idea of talking about this guy. There was an article in one of my um, uh, in in one of the journals, the newspaper here, and you see this art over and over. I care because m me making art, it cares. I, I, me making art is a statement that goes against this. this. So by 
by not caring about this type of art and by doing the art that I care about, um, this is my own way of dealing with it most of the time. Now it's more, I, ca I talk about it because it's a nice topic of conversation. And I'm, I wanted to make this a nice discussion. I, I like this. I like talking about that. I don't care about looking at it. I like talking about it and it tells a lot about the state of the art world and what's considered normal now. Like, go back 200 years from now and, and say to the critics of the time that this is going to be main street art. They they would uh, they would think well that's very very uh, that's impossible all right emojis are new hieroglyphs uh piero manzoni we can talk about it we can talk about it we, we should make another episode because I, I still have some painting to do oh yeah there's so much stuff like well, okay, well, I can make a list. May just go into the Discord and go into, into, there is actually a, there is actually a content suggestion here in the Discord. And somebody saw, already did thoughts on Carl Block, uh, the Frank Reddy palette. This is where you can suggest content for any live stream. So we're not going to have time to do that now. But um, but you can go there and in the Discord suggest something to do in uh, in the next episode. Okay, <laughs> maybe you're testing the waters before breaking into a new market. Go for it. You know, it's. It's very tricky to get into this market. It's a, it's a tightly, um, tightly held little circle. You have to be one of the chosen ones to to get accepted. Like like, it's very elitist. So not anybody can be accepted in there. All right, let's switch to. Out of nowhere. Okay, 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 okay. Hold on, hold on. We have apparently somebody who disagrees. Formley's art is interesting in boundary pushing. Pushing. So I'll, I'll stay two minutes. If you have good arguments to to say why it's interesting, like because you said it's interesting, uh, being boundary pushing is not enough for me to be interested in it. So if you're if you're saying that pushing boundaries is is enough to be make me interested in looking at it, um, no. I'm interested in thinking about why the the art world and the art elite think this is worth that that much. I'm interested in that in a very weird way because I think this is kind of crazy. But um So Xifire Menix, if you have a hole, I'll, I'll wait for your um, arguments. Ch change my change my mind. Well, I'll while I'm waiting, I'm, I'm gonna prepare for uh, our little demonstration because part two of this stream will have well pretty much nothing to do with part one very much and I actually I'm gonna change the I'm gonna change the 
change the okay, thumbnail and all. I'm gonna change everything. Uh, we're, we're gonna do just a little demo painting because I need to do a tutorial and I found a nice uh, model that I want to make for our demonstration. So. Uh, apparently, Xifire Manix is not bringing this. All right. Well, it gives me time to to set up here. Okay, so here it comes. Oh, nice. We have some, some nice discussion to, to have here. So it might stay a little bit more. So no matter what, we couldn't rival the camera. We started looking at other ways and possibilities. Art is also recording human history. Sure. I still don't see the point with with this or this and why why is this art worth 46 millions I I don't see the connection here it's just like the argument is as abstract as the the work uh, why do people like talking about old works of art, the same black squares that's about 100 years old? Are there no rising artists who are creating something interesting? Yes, there are. Like People like to talk about a lot of stuff. It's usually when they grow a little bit older, they get more value. Which is why they attract a lot of... When you sell that for 46 million, it gets a lot of eyes towards you. There are, yeah, that's what Damien is saying is right. Lots of interesting art being created, I would say, now more than ever. Instead of looking outward, modern art starting looking inward. So? I don't know, I'm still not convinced that it's worth making this out of looking inward. And if you look inward and you see that, what does it tell you about yourself? Like if you're looking inward of yourself and this is what you see... I don't know. I don't like this. I'm still not convinced. I don't get this one. People forget that new art is more coherent than older art with less well-rounded techniques, even if it's neat to look at. I don't get the point here. <laughs> it looks like 200 max if it's large. To me, art should evoke emotion. For me, an emotion 
is evoked through a few things the picture itself the technique color composition etc skill in, involved much modern art does not touch me so yeah we pretty much agree well i think this sums it up i definitely don't click with twombly if you guys want to buy this be my guest sure <laughs> <laughs> all right so next part so absolutely nothing to do with the first one and actually let me um, let me change we um we are doing something completely different we're painting this what yes completely different told you we're painting this and actually i need to change the description and title so hold on for a moment and I'll be right back because um, live oil painting demonstration recording tutorial for YouTube Okay, so, yeah, you know how I do my tutorials. I need to paint and I need to record the footage. So I'm going to do that right now. Bam. Change the picture, change the title. You thought you were here for some reason, but you're not. Tricked you into clicking and now you're there. And you're going to see something completely different. And I'm actually going to plug my lav mic. If I want to... Hello. Oh, it works. Okay. Good. Good. Hi, Cody. All right. So, Damien, thank you for... <laughs> That, that cat is a beautiful place to learn value, exactly. Look at this well-rounded shape. It's just a great exercise. I think it's great for beginners, and I intend to do a, a sort of a quick beginner lesson on my channel. And I'm going to use this one as the subject for the demonstration. And it's perfect because it's very round, it's easy to trace and actually I, I traced it myself. So there is no skills involved, right? This is teaching material, right? So please bear with me here. Um, this is a teaching demonstration for my channel. So I'm not gonna paint exactly the same way I used to, like the same way I normally do. And I'm going to do things in a very, um, <clears throat> so to, to sort of demonstrate. So it's going to be kind of, um, it's going to be a bit different than what I normally teach. Not exactly the same palette, not exactly the same techniques. This is for the needs of this video. Um, just making my setup here. We can still have the conversation in Xfire. It's just that I don't want to stare at these paintings for a while. So we, we can still have the conversation. So if you still want to um, bring up the um, the modern art arguments, go ahead. There's no problem. I'm still here. Conversation is still open uh, because I'm not recording the sound. I'm just using the picture. So no problem.
The money is irrelevant, art is what anybody, anyone is willing to pay for it. Alright, so a little bit of a canvas mixing here. Actually, maybe I should... I should record... No. I'll do it like that. I think, yeah, probably cats were domesticated at several places at some point. It's really hard to know, but like Egypt for sure was a place where cats were domesticated. And uh, the, the first, I don't know, I'm not sure, but. Um, one of the first for sure yeah there's the the goddess bastet is the cat goddess if my memory is right i still think cats to be very completely honest are not fully domesticated they just like using us as sort of a caregivers but they're still wild in a way. They kind of like to have us around. Oh yeah, exactly. I was saying that exactly. They like us because we feed them, we provide heat. Okay, so it's this cat is a perfect model for um, values, especially dark values. Well, dogs, no, I wouldn't say same though, because dogs really. When you see the difference between a Great Dane and a Chihuahua, it's really like we have made this species really what we want from it. Whereas cats, they have like much more of an independent, I don't know, independent sort of, they, they all feel like they have their personality. Well, dogs the same, I have to say, but dogs i don't know they feel more domesticated i'm sorry i have problems of uh, my mic is glitching out here and there so cats always win yeah you know i follow a lot of um um bird watching associations and cats are nasty for wildlife um like these tiny like cute little creatures they are still wild hunters very efficient hunters and they hunt a lot of garden birds and they are responsible for a lot of um for a lot of um, bird populations declining. It's an interesting point, uh, Rosa. Oh. Sorry. Cats think the Archimedes the light like it when you fake it out. Huh. 
<laughs> I agree, Rosa. Oh yeah, by the way, yeah, sure. My palette is actually um, not a very common palette for me. It's um, ivory black, raw umber, Venetian red. So almost in titanium white. So very simplified um, grisaille palette. And it's just the red because there is some oxidized part and um it would be nice to paint that with to bring a little bit of a of red orange hues so what's cool with this cat is that it's very very I haven't flattened though because I've traced it. For this one, it's it's been traced. I'm not lying. Like, because um, for the demonstration, I'll most likely recommend that beginners just trace for the because the the first I first recommend that they try. So no. No headache and no complication of the no complication due to the drawing. And this metal texture generally very interesting to work on values. You can work on whatever type of metal you have, silverware like a in aluminum pot an iron pot whatever you have like that's metal uh, th there used to be this huge trend of uh, portraits with armors because the armor was looking so good because it was all shiny and metal so see, metal has always been popular. What's great with this technique is you can just bring back enlighten by simply pulling into the white here and bringing it in like that. Just after the, after the, so you can first lay down a sort of a, a bit of gray and then push the white into it. And it works really well. I think it's just the angle because it's theoretically 100% accurate. But yeah, probably just the angle might look more natural or maybe sometimes you get tricked by the volume um, yeah in most cases I would say I would say that um, I, I would double check it but here I'm very confident that there's nothing wrong with the proportions for once I was I always draw from scratch and you know it's it's difficult. I do that most of the time. Like I almost never trace if you've been on my channel for a while you might testify. I never trace for my own art, but here. Just don't took me in the way, sorry.
Is that what your art is just talked about because of its price? Yeah, but it gets to this price because it's talked about first. So you kind of need to have the the right amount of um, notoriety before you, your art can be sold for this amount. And this is not like this is a well-oiled machine. that uh, they, they have artists that they want to promote and they, they promote them. By they, I mean the art world, the galleries, the art institutions. Let's zoom in on my model to see the eyes. Ah, I might actually, I now that I zoom in, I see traces of oxidation. So what I'm gonna do, uh, I'm probably going to be adding a touch of turquoise. Phalo turquoise. This one, phalo turquoise, because I'm gonna spare my um, cobalt teal. And because of the oxidation, when I zoom in on the reference, I know that I might actually need some yellow ochre, a little bit. So generally speaking, because I know that I've had the question uh, last time, you want to start with the darkest. It's not, um, it's not mandatory. But it usually makes it easier. About to rewatch Loving Vincent. I've never seen it. Again, he's also a local movie star. Oh. Hey, thanks, Jasmine. Well, technically, this is not my process, it's more a beginner friendly process that I would recommend as sort of a study for everybody. For anybody what looking for um, practice material, I've I've put the link to the reference though in the com in the description. So if you want to have a look, do it for yourself. It's a 
great exercise of value handling in here it's because it's copper it has like a little greenish a little bit of greenish tint so i'm going to incorporate some green can you point out things like core shadow mid-tones um what do you mean point out on the on the on the model you mean actual point or just talk whenever i'm i'm painting them yeah the sketch christopher is is 100 accurate because it's been traced so it is it is accurate for once I didn't go through eyeballing it and I consider myself to be pretty good at drawing from a reference very accurately it's still exhausting <laughs> And, uh, and it's something that frightens off a lot of, uh, a lot of new painters. So if I start and I make a demo and the demo starts with something super skilled, like I'm going to lose a lot of, uh, potential viewers. Oh yeah, Rosa, you're going to be friends with uh, Cody. He's a big, big uh, Van Gogh fan. I also really like Van Gogh. Really inspiring character. Very unique in the history of art. It's crazy. It's like a... You know, a meteor in the sky.
<laughs> well, knowing the Egyptians, I wouldn't be surprised if they used a mummified cat. Because that's that's true. They they had mummified kitties. Gary, is it stuffed or is it actually emptied? I think you don't like you empty to, to do the mummification. You have to empty everything. It's not like the joke doesn't work. And we're gonna stop the joke here, by the way, before it goes wild. Yeah, let's not comment on this one. Uh, how often do I paint these? Well, only when I need really um, content for um, for a, a video, a tutorial. So not very often, I would say I do once a month, like a, a special study subject, maybe once a month. Oui, exactement, Jasmine, c'est ça. Et d'ailleurs, c'est pour ça qu'ils ont ce côté un peu euh, presque sacré et divinisé euh, avec cette stature très... Euh, très intemporelle, très... très... Ouais, très stylisé, je dirais. Yeah, the stylization and perfection achieved is because they studied their subject Command. very well. Zooming in for 10 seconds. And out. 
they also um the entire thing was to make a a timeless or maybe eternal if you prefer depiction of a cat like it was supposed to be a cat that would go into eternity so that's that's the most of the of the egyptian art was had something to do with death and the the funeral like the the, the passage into the afterlife and the eternal life so the art has been the egyptians have maintained the same style for several thousand years or like lots of centuries um because this was art that was made to last forever basically so there is no point in changing styles every decade if the art is supposed to last forever So right here I'm doing the oxidized part. Don't know how well it uh... Don't know how well it looks on the or on your end. I'm gonna go with broad strokes and, and see what happens. There's some nice hieroglyphs here that I don't know if you can see it. Uh, actually, let's switch to the reference. Um, okay, bring back the music. So this is the reference here. Just uh, look at the look at the hieroglyphs. I don't know how I'm gonna paint this texture. It's gonna be a tough one. It's very pleasant to paint as a subject. I, like if you have nothing to do, really recommend it. I have the links in the description. It's a wonderful subject. And this bronze. A really cool. Um, this is not a, a the, the 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 description says cat, but you know Egyptians they link the sacred animal with the goddess. So yeah, it it might actually be Bastet, but this one on this side it was described as just cat. <laughs> uh, just check it out in the in the description. There's all the info man you know what I, it really makes me want to pick up sculpture at some point 
I'm gonna give up uh, this entire painting channel and become a, a sculpture channel. It's really not, like I really feel that this is going to be the next stage in my artistic journey, sort of. Oh yeah, it's plus XP. And really when you look at the palette, it's really not that tricky. It's really not that tricky. It's lots of browns, grays. It's all very, very uh, tight together in terms of value range. There is a lot of leeway, so... You can, you can um, just, if it's too dark, you can lighten it. If it's too light, you can darken it very easily because it's so close. Command, zooming in for 10 seconds. So yeah. Oh yeah, the VR experience, the VR Van Gogh. I saw it. I, I saw it in the news. I was wondering if it wasn't just hype for, you know, hype for no good reason. Like they, they sometimes like to hype it a bit more than it deserves. Like for marketing, but I don't know. So I was kind of, um, kind of, um, hesitant on, well, is this like, I'm always kind of, 
how to say, intrigued, but not in a very positive way, in what a VR experience of art is. Like, as long as you actually have some real paintings next, I don't mind the VR thingy as kind of a plus. But I don't know, I, I've always been kind of uh, reluctant to... to go for this VR thing. Oh, nice. So no, that's that's nice. I, I understand the the appeal. Truly showing his art to the masses and keeping him relevant with all ages. Yep, I totally agree with that. But like, isn't the VR thing kind of? Um, I don't know. Like, I would fear that it might ruin it. But I guess they they know what they're doing. It's, I guess it's like everything, you can't know what it is before you, you actually put the goggles and try for yourself. Uh, looks like chocolate, does it? The VR just uses a relevant, up-to-date way of seeing art. Nice! So if you tell me that it's worth it, I, I, I believe you. I believe you. It's just I only saw you know the promotional articles, and yeah, obviously they're gonna say that it's awesome, but I didn't know if I should trust them or not. I didn't know what to think. But if you tell me that it's good, I believe you. One hundred percent. No, but I, I don't think the VR thing is is doing this, uh, Christopher. I think they are trying to sort of bring something extra, kind of like almost a video game experience. Like it's the same theme, but it's not. What I would 
so it's related to the paintings but it's not about the paintings per se it's about what's around so as long as they do have the actual paintings i would say it's worth it if they do have the paintings and if the paintings are still the the star of the show then i I would find it an interesting um, thing if you tell me all right so they have this big VR exhibition there's just only one painting and it's all in the back next to the toilets you can barely see it and you can only put the googles on and and just uh, do the VR stuff there I would find it I would find that it's a shame probably but I'm pretty sure it's not I'm pretty sure they still highlight the actual paintings The Googles, what did I say? Hi, happy new year, Emo. Most of all, they have the paintings, but not the originals. Oh, okay. Doing a study of satyr and nymphs. Bougereau, you mean? The, the one with like the... Like a lot of nymphs. Oh, that's a tough one. Do you study the entire painting or just just a, a detail? Christopher, because that's a huge one. That's a lot of naked ladies to paint. <laughs> to paint to perfection if you try to do copy book roll. Because very high level. Wow, the entire painting. God. How big? I'm gonna have so much fun in the end to put the green spots here and there. It's so subtle.
All right, I'm gonna remove, if you don't mind, I'm going to remove the reference. Don't cry, it's in the description. It's just that I need to have the clean shot for my video. So if you want the reference, go to the link. Um, Cause I'm gonna add it in, in post for my video. So there's the tail here and then it's sitting on a sort of a, I think they've added this by the way, like the museum, they've added the pedestal. <clears throat> well, it is easy, Emo. It is. That's what I want to show. Oh. What I'm good at is doing it first try but like even a beginner like I traced the cat so the, the, the proportions not a problem what I'm good at is just um, I made few mistakes or I correct them rapidly so it looks like I'm not struggling I'm struggling like anybody else we all have the same obstacles for the same model. But really, if you look at the, the cutters that I'm using, it's not that complicated. And really nothing special in my brush strokes. maybe i'm i have a little bit of experience so it feels that i'm more confident probably but anybody could with a little bit of a practice this can be done i mean try it for yourself trace the cat Trace the cat, um, transfer it, and you'll you'll have a, a very easy time doing the rest. The values are not very complicated. <laughs> you gain a lot of XP. It gives me an idea to just make the make our Discord like could we have that? Could we have a, a sort of an XP system? Could be fun to have, you know, whenever you maybe I should do that in the Is there in isn't there something on Discord where you can actually have kind of XP and levels. It could be fun if every time you make a painting, you gain XP, like in a, in a video game.
could be uh, could be sweet. Oh yes, yours truly. I'm a D and D player. It's not silly. D and D is awesome. You're actually talking to a, a dungeon master here. Oh yeah, I played Pathfinder also, but um, I don't know, prefer D&D, um, &D. even though it's not perfect, it's just what you make of it really, you can play any game, they'll work, like what matters most is the story, and only make my own stories. I, I never take pre-made uh, campaigns. That's the fun. The entire fun is to, in making your own stories. I prefer small, medium. Um, it's not really about the the size. Is not a the, the size of the painting. Abstractly speaking, is not what matters. Is more the size of your subject. So what I do prefer is to have the subject fit within the size of my hand so if it's a face i like it to be between this size and this size so the here look at this this the cat is all, almost the size of my hand the this is kind of my preferred size so to say and after that i try to imagine how many elements i need to put in there so if I have like nine characters, I'm going to need a big canvas to fit all the nine characters with a head this big. And if I have only one character, I can work on a smaller canvas. And it also depends on how, how well it works for the overall project. So it's not really something you prefer. It's like you see what works best. But definitely there is a size of subject that I prefer working on. 
and every time I exceed this size or work smaller, it doesn't work as well. Hey Barat, I hope too. I'm sure you will. Just takes a bit of practice. <laughs> no problem, Belson. It will stay up. You can uh, catch again.
I don't want to bother with the pedestal here. I want to brush it because it's really not part of what I want to talk about, but I don't want to I don't want it to be um a visual nuisance in the end. I really, really don't want to spend time on this. But if it's not straight, it's going to look bad. Yeah. Well, hold your breath on Notre Dame because apparently there's a, a sort of a, a project to bring down some of the wind, I don't know how you call that, like wind windows, cutted windows worked, but there's a, pro a, a project to make some of them contemporary. So ask contemporary artists to make them to replace the old, um, the old ones. And I think these ones are not even damaged though. Stained glass, yeah, that's what it. So some, apparently they want to take some stained glass, bring down the old ones, that were not really damaged, by the way, and replace them as kind of a statement of the restoration that's been done. And so they want to, they want to replace them with uh, contemporary projects. So contemporary artists could submit um, their ideas. I personally don't want this to happen because most of the time I know how it sounds, but most of the time they kind of ruin it and make a monstrosity. But if some artists might actually, like this being a comeback of traditional, so some contemporary artists could actually make a good traditional looking uh, stained glass that could um, work in harmony with the rest but I doubt it I don't know it's just I know I know contemporary artists too well to know that a lot of them might not actually want to respect the the rest of the of the building and might want to just just stand out when it's really not the point you're not there to stand out but i know that a lot of of these artists who might want to contribute and submit their propositions they might want to just steal the thunder from the rest of the the cathedral Yeah, so the original uh, would just be in the museum and they will ask contemporary artists to uh, have new ideas for uh, some of the stained glass. Not all of them, of course, but some kind of central ones. What do they do with Westminster? Uh, 
Oh yeah, the burial. I I thought they changed the stained glass in Westminster as well. But you have examples like I think they there is a Matisse church with uh, stained glass done by Matisse. Like you have tons of examples of modern stained glass. It's not like it's not a thing. It exists in a lot of places where it belongs. I still think Notre Dame should have stained glass that inspired either by the medieval or by the, the 19th century renovation. I don't know. Because the renovation, the Notre Dame has been renovated, which is why it looks like that. Otherwise, it would look less good before the, the before the fire. It was renovated before in the 19th century by a famous architect but he used the codes of the Middle Ages to do the renovation. So it's still 19th century, but they used the aesthetic of the Middle Ages. Yeah, pretty much, Cody. Agreed. Oh my god. I'm reaching the part that I hate to do, which is kind of this annoying part here that I don't care about, but that takes more work and than, than I would like to give it. So I'm not just going to just go very quickly because I just don't want to spend time here. Yeah, not only the feet, but all the the rest. Like, there is a lot of intricate details. If you really look about it, if you really look closely, shadows, stuff like that. I'm not reading really to that now, so I'm gonna rush it. I wouldn't suggest that normally. Oh yeah, we already had some uh, submissions in the self-portrait challenge. la suite de la scène ouais quand je continuerai le tableau ouais, pas de souci là je l'avais laissé euh... j'avais d'autres choses à faire du coup je l'ai laissé de côté depuis la dernière fois que j'ai fait un live en fait Mm-hmm. 
Ready. Oh, there's some nice um, cracking textures here in the, the bronze. Very interesting design for these uh, cracks. Oh, isn't a self-portrait a selfish portrait? <laughs> In a way, selfish. You could paint anybody, but you're painting yourself. Selfish. <laughs> well, you know, for this challenge, as I said, cheating is allowed. So if you want to use a, a pun to make your life easier, you can do a, can do a shellfish portrait if you want. Oh, nice, Rosa. Yeah, one canvas per day. Insane. I wish I could do that, but I, I expect to live a bit longer than him, so I, I guess I'm good. I can paint one per day. I paint much slower, but in the end I might get the same number if I live long enough. Uh, Monet has tons of them, especially because Monet uh, lived to a very old age, so...
All right, so now details, texture, and subtle blending. Hi, Into the Darkness. Thanks. Thank you for watching. Welcome here. Welcome to the live streams. All right, so I don't want to over blend. I'm just going to just melt a few edges. And to preserve the vitality of the strokes. Now, super interesting is we have some hieroglyphs so it could be a nice opportunity to do some graffito so I don't know what's written on these but I'm gonna just suggest Doesn't really work. This graffiti doesn't really work. So I'm gonna just it's it's too um too obvious, so I'm really going to just make it very discreet and complement with my brush because just this graffito it's too strong. So I'm gonna brush it, brush the rest. I've exaggerated the reflections a bit because it's the most beautiful. And I have no shame. Tail is here. I think he might have some type of gray. Kind of, I would say kind of weak gray. When you take charcoal dust and make paint, you get carbon black. Which is not the best black. Still a black. So there is a shadow here, and a sh the the tail is actually here. This this here is the shadow. I'm gonna blend it away. Yeah, type exclamation point reference. It's all in the comments. I can't, I can't be your, your uh, supervisor all the time and show everything. You have to use the commands. You've been a mod for long enough. I 
I said that I've removed it for um, the video because it was kind of in the way. What? So are you implying that being a mod on this channel is not work? What? See you, Cody. Have a good one. Aha, uh -huh. now the little greenish. So this tur touches turquoise. I would put way more than necessary here. Touch of turquoise and orange here and there. Little specks. And we'll bring some very interesting chromatic texture. <laughs> oh, it's work, especially during the emoji walls. Tell me about it. And it's a... It's a big responsibility. So see, I just take a, a, a tiny, tiny touch of turquoise, put it in the in the yellow ochre here, and I get a very dull but punchy gray cyan, uh, green cyan, sorry. And I'm gonna just uh, I'll just go into the just superimpose almost and play with what i already have and try to complement I really love the design of this cat. I, I, it's so simple, but it works so well. It's almost pure. I really love it. Is this a... I don't know, like, l let me zoom in.
this here. Just a little touch here. Come on, I can't get closer. And the thing is, it's a good idea to do that just at the edge, just at the transition. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Mike. See, right here, for example, this gray here. Look at this gray, how, how it has no identity here. It's like blah. But I'm going to zoom in. Um, actually, I want to zoom in like that. And now it doesn't feel blah anymore. Now it feels like copper. And it's crazy how a little subtle touch is enough. Why at the transitions? Well, I don't know the transitions between the different um, scenes. And I, I think I'm not going to overblend. I'm gonna keep it pretty, pretty rough like that. I'm gonna make the outer edge with this green cyan here.
Ah oui, ça, ça arrive par moment. Le chat YouTube est connu pour bugger régulièrement. Ça m'arrive aussi. Enfin, connu. Genre ça, moi, je, je, ça m'arrive souvent. This part here is funny as well, it's corroded. This is... This has been one of the funny... The funnest... More enjoyable um, studies that I've been doing. Metallic... Texture. It's just so fun. It's a tail, but it's corroded because it's it's copper and it's been corroded because it's been done. It's been done. Um, how long ago was it done? I'm, I don't have the strength to calculate it's broken and i think there might have been something attached here because there is there are some look at this with the reference there are some kind of almost like gear teeth i don't know what it's called on the like something to attach some kind of attachment Thing here like the two like knobs or whatever what are they maybe it was attached to something else um, my mic cut up oh, I don't need, uh... sorry so I don't have batteries here or yeah here hello hey check check No more battery in my mic. Well, in my uh, portable mic. So I have this one. I'm gonna have to put this almost in my face here. Uh, hope you can hear me pro properly. Let me know, cause I'm I'm gonna be a bit more in the distance probably. So yeah, yeah. The indentations. It probably means that the, um, the this sculpture was connected to something or was attached. Uh, that it was probably attached to something. That's that's my guess. This is glorious. The painting this texture is just so satisfying. There needs to be no no space, uh, Gary. No spacing between the exclamation point and the.
Oh, my bad, it's exclamation point ref. But it should all be in the description though, so... Reference. Back to normal. And now just a bit of orange bits here and there as well because the oxidation makes both the orange hues and the green Copper. I'm in love with copper. That's my new love. I'm. I'm just realizing that it's the first time I've painted copper. But, gosh, this is satisfying. Oh my god. It's much more fun than gold. I've painted gold. I've painted silver. Damn, this is the most fun metal to paint, hands down. I immediately fell in love. The, 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 this palette works so well for that, just a bit of finishing red. A Screenshot taken in the Discord. A touch of phalo red. I find it much less boring than gold. Yeah, it's so colorful. And it doesn't seem like that at first glance, but the more you look at it and the more you the more you look the more you <laughs> the more colors you see the more subtle nuance you perceive um, the cutter lottery the the screenshot lottery yeah. I'm well known for having my face in the screenshot every time. <laughs> but. Ah. Let's.
All right, I'm gonna keep it like that because I think it works. Maybe just a few bits here. Well, these parts here, they do seem that they haven't been loved. So here, just finishing here and My definition? I don't know. To me, it doesn't mean anything. <clears throat> Seems kind of insulting, I don't know. finish with a couple of um, highlights here to just Promised these are my last details. Ah, oh, boy, that's it. Copper is awesome. Copper is officially awesome. Best. Best um, metal to paint. Oh my god! I I love it. I love it. The, really, I've I, I've painted a lot of metals in my career, but I never painted this with oxidation and all. It's amazing. Full of cutter, much more interesting, much more interesting than gold, my friends. Ah, nice. All right, should we bring a? The the next thing I want to do is mercury we want to paint this mercury but yeah cover is super fun super fun to paint really just look in the at the description and just find the the reproduction and do it for yourself you, you'll see oh, hold on I just saw that Alright, <laughs> sorry, less details, you know. Alright, 
thank you for being here my friends feel free to like before you leave and um and it was great uh, talking with you debating with you and uh, discussing things here and there uh, let me know what you think about this new formula uh, of discussion and painting i don't know if i'm gonna keep it we'll, honestly i don't know we'll see uh, anyway, I'll see you for the next one. Next one is going to be either this weekend or uh, on next uh, Tuesday. But, um, and uh, yeah, well, take care and, uh, and just uh, as always, my friends, joy, inspiration, all the good stuff. I'll see you for the next one. Bye. All right, now this is the awkward moment where I need to look for the end stream button. Here it is. All right, this is this is the time now. Bye. I'm serious. <laughs>